Hey, everybody. Here is part four of my lexicon series. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a, it's a it's a long process, right? And each of the eight paintings that I uh, eventually finished for the series, uh, I'd say each one taught me something different. And with this one, what I did was I, uh, and these are all eight slot boards that I started out with. And a slot board is a board where uh, it can be used for cleaning off your, your brushes and you can clean off palette paper. It's kind of a collection of paint that you just didn't want to waste. And so given that they started out that way, it's always remarkable to me to know that you can even turn a slot board into a finished work. And that's what I'm fascinated uh, in. And I wonder if you're fascinated with that as well. And I wonder if you also work with uh, slot boards. If you do, please comment below. I'd love to know. But in this particular part four, what I do is I look at the painting uh, and it is a slot board and there's an awful lot going on. There are a lot of shapes and I want to quiet it down. So what I'm going to do is create a mask and I'm going to use like a white pencil to trace through these shapes. And uh, that way, uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm able to explore shapes that I really love and, and that I'm intrigued with. And I can knock out some of that chaos by uh, entering some uh, calm, calm with a uh, solid paint color that doesn't have a change in value or color. And so that is the contrast of what I have right now. So I hope you enjoy this part four. As usual, uh, please comment below the video. I'd love to hear what you think. And uh, of course, if you can subscribe, I would really uh, appreciate that because it helps me grow my channel and helps me create more videos for you. So here we go. Here's part four. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I'm on my last couple boards here, uh, at least with the ones I was planning on doing, but then of course I've created more slot boards, so you never know where that's gonna go. I'll, they'll probably end up uh, being added to the series, but for now I'm aiming for eight. So I've got a show coming up and uh, going for just a series of eight using this uh, palette that was um, our granddaughters, and I'm really loving it, <laughs> really loving it. So as I talked about those spokes in the wheel, um, this palette is going to have legs for me. So what I've done is I have this gray paper. I've punched out holes, you can kind of see, and I just haphazardly laid it over this painting, which um, I can lift this up. You can see how crazy it is. Um, yeah, it's just super crazy. And I kind of save the, this feels really challenging to me. So I kind of save this one for last. And um, I'm going to try, I, I like crazy shapes. So when I overlap some of these cutouts that I had done quite a while ago, it just kind of occurred to me that I kind of like some of these shapes. Now I don't have to use exactly what's here, but if I just lay it like this, um, I, I like this. So it's uh, what I would do is cover over quite a bit of the um, color though. So I have to think a little bit about that. Like I don't wanna cover too much color. So I want some of that to be left. So I'm gonna come in and change uh, how much I'm going to cover. And actually it's more, you're kind of dealing with positive versus negative. Do I paint what I see or do I paint what's being covered up? And I think I'm going to paint what's gray solid. So I'm just gonna kind of move this over and until I like what I see. Um, it's just a little bit of a, a different way of working on this panel. And even though it's really different from the others, I can use color and additional shape to bring it all together. And uh, just a matter of playing around with these shapes until I like what I see. Okay, so that would get rid of some of the chaos that's in the underpainting. And I like this shape and I kind of like what's going on here and I can make adjustments. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just start out with these shapes here I'm using a white pencil because the painting is mid-tone and it's, if I use anything else, it's gonna be hard to see. 
a pen would be kind of hard to see. And so I'm pretty much just going to go over the shapes of this gray sheet of paper and then um, lift it and then make adjustments from there. The painting gets a little bumpy from thick paint. These curves and lines, you know, in, in a crazy way do relate to letters because letters are curves and straight lines. So even though they're not the, the actual, let's say letters and numbers, they do uh, relate in a, in a certain way. And I'm gonna finish that little rectangle here. I can kind of just get this out of the way for a second. Oh. Okay, now I've got a line here and I've got kind of an angle there, which I like. So again, I'm kind of going based on some ideas, like this just gives me ideas, right? Okay, now um, then, what I want to do is take my, I can find my ruler. I want to, like, I don't want to cover up too much here. So I'm going to do kind of an angle here and maybe what I'll do is even score it. You can score your board anytime. And I might even just score another one randomly here just because it's sometimes it just sets up a geometry that I don't know where it's gonna lead, but I kind of like the surprise of like these gauss in lines. And so now what I'm gonna do is just evaluate here. I've got um half circle, this is a crazy shape, I've got this guy going and a triangle there, and so yes, I'm gonna be covering up some of this uh, stuff here. Grab a brush, and I've got my paints already squirted out. My water is fresh. It almost doesn't matter what color I use. Uh, so I'm going to mix just a kind of a neutral here, a harmony color. There are a lot of colors in here, but uh, when I did this board, a lot of these colors are, which is here. Okay, so there's my palette, and you can kind of see how. Definitely relates. This is a pretty big brush um, for getting around all these areas, but we'll see how it works. So right now there are just so many shapes here. And so one of the reasons why I want to have this really large shape is just to calm it down a bit. It's just got a lot going on. So I choose, you know, what type of gray I want. This aqua has very little tinting power. This doesn't seem to do much. There's a nice green. Um, I can decide how light I want it. And of course the color can always be changed, which is great. Now I add a little bit more of this green, a little bit of the orange for character. There we go, that's kind of nice. So I'm gonna come in here. Uh, I'm working on this uh, turn my board here. <laughs> Make sure I've got it right. Um, I can use this to get some nice lines going right up the bat. I 
I can break up the division of space. I can break it up as long as if the values are close, then it won't feel like small pieces. It'll just feel like a large piece with some color change. And that's, that's always kind of the nice thing. So I'm putting paint on kind of thick here. And going to follow, I mean, I don't have to have exactly straight edges, but just getting the paint on. Sometimes I can go faster if I use my painter's edge. Trying to have minimal brush strokes so that it's a feeling of calm. A nice straight edge with these flat brushes. It's really not that hard to do. That's one reason why I love the flat brushes. <clears throat> Get your paint off. Keeps the edge nice and sharp. And this type of thing, because it's so early on in a painting's life here, after done the play stage, and you may fall in love with areas, but uh, it's just for me personally, I like to have thicker paint and be able to reference the history. And if I identify things I love too early uh, after the play stage, then there's just, even if I sand it back or whatever, I'm right down to the gesso layer and there's just not enough, you know, complexity of color layer. So I don't want to get too close to things too fast. And this, this approach where you play and then you maybe put some type of uh, structure, whether it's a pattern or a stencil or whatever it might be, and you superimpose it on top of that play layer, you automatically save some of the play Without it, um, let's see here, I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. Uh, without it all disappearing, you save some of it, but not all of it, because too much of it could be really chaotic. And and it's also very randomly done. And I didn't think too hard about where I put that stencil on top. I just put it on there. And what I was looking at was the resulting shape. You know, do I like the shape? It wasn't about the colors or <clears throat> anything else like that. So already uh, this painting looks a lot easier to deal with now because I'm blocking out some of the craziness. And I could change color with this main color, but I can also do that later. So for now, the main goal is just for going for quiet and um, seeing how that impacts the overall feeling. Do I have to slow down when I get to these smaller shapes? Little half circles. 